As he said, we go back longer than either one of us would care to admit, and uh, <laughs> telling stories about uh, what we had done together. And a lot of great stories start with, this. well, I was hanging out with Joe Livers and we were doing this. I don't know that we can go into those because, quite honestly, I'm not sure if the statute of limitations has run out yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what a great guy to have with you, what a great guy to have next to you. And when I was thinking about Lebanon and Joe in particular started thinking about uh, why we are who we are and why we do what we do. And a similar question was asked when I was being interviewed right after appointment by Guard Experience Magazine. They asked me if you could have dinner with one military leader from history, who would it be? And I thought about it for a long time and, and I told him I would, I would have dinner with this man whose name was James Edward, and it didn't register with them, and it likely doesn't register with you all, yeah. <coughs> undoubtedly doesn't. I'm the only guy that knows who this individual is. I've researched him time and time again, but let me tell you a little bit about it. He was an immigrant to this country of ours, and seven months after he landed in New York City from Ireland in the old country, he was a private in the Union Army. He fought with the Army of the Potomac for three years, re-enlisted after the Battle of Gettysburg, and finished the war at the first sergeant, where he went to reside in Cincinnati, Ohio. 82nd New York Infantry was the unit that he fought with, and he participated in 24 major battles, all of the major battles that are known to us as those that were fought at the Army of the Potomac. So what are we going to talk about at dinner with James Edward? Well, it's a confined amount of space, so we have to figure out what is the most important thing to ask the man, what is the most thing to pick his brain about. So I have to prioritize these things a little bit. And being a military man, I'd be really interested in those battles. I'd be really interested what it was like to tangle with Stonewall Jackson outside of Antietam Creek stand on Cemetery Ridge and push back Pickett's Charge, or what he thought about uh, U.S. Grant and George McClellan and George B. As a military man, I have natural curiosity about those things. But the military side of me and the soldier side of me, that's not the most important thing. As an individual and a citizen, more important was to ask how the man survived in Andersonville Prison when he was sent there in 1864. Because if James Edward Hogan would have died in Andersonville, then I wouldn't be here. All of my siblings and sibling cousins would not be here, half of which are armed service veterans. So the selfish part of the family man, I want to know how he survived Andersonville. Still, that's not the most important thing. Most important thing to ask an individual seven months off the boat, a private in the United States Army, soldiered his way up to the ranks, survived that entire ordeal, was what in the heck were you thinking? Seven months off the boat. Raise your right hand, said you solemnly swear to support and defend the Constitution. What in this country, what in this world made you risk your very life? life of your progeny 
what was so important? And the answer that the man would give, I'm sure, would be extremely anticlimactic. Because it's the same answer that every veteran would give here. It's the same answer that the honored dad would give here. It's the right thing to do. So knowing this, knowing what the right thing is, and amongst us, we understand what the right thing is. We have seen benefits of our service and the outcomes of the sacrifice. We understand that. The right thing in this day and age is very relative. So it, it actually needs a little bit of elucidation, a little bit of thought. For us, we understand that the right thing is something that's larger than self. Something that means something more than our own comfort. Veterans Day is the honored dead. So, in this country, what larger than self remain in. It's the right thing to stand on the country you're choosing to. It's the right to pick up rifle and sneak out. Protect those that are either qualified or inclined to do so for themselves. The right thing to pick up and all that to agree with us and would never be here today. It is right to give thanks to those who gave their last full measure. It is right to acknowledge them on Memorial Day and every day. It is right to acknowledge the families that have borne this sacrifice. And it is also right to understand that knowing what they faced and knowing what the sacrifice would be, that they would still make the decision to stay in the colors and stay in the flag. Closing. I'd like to thank the veterans here. And pride is evident in your service and how you carry yourself. Thank you for doing this work. Mostly, though, I'd like to thank the families who had to bear the true sacrifice of what this nation requires. And their loss is the cement that will hold this nation together forever. So thank you so much for being able to talk to you today. I am so blessed and honored to be with you, and God bless America. Thank you.